Hey everybody, so today's video, I'm going to be building a custom iPod Touch. Um, this is the seventh generation uh, product red model. And basically what I'm gonna be doing is swapping this white display um, glass for a black one, which I have here. Um, you know, I thought it would look cool because like when they made the product red iPhone 7 with the white screen, it was like, yeah, it's cool, but everyone wanted to have a black screen. And then they came out with the iPhone 8 product red with the black screen, and it was obviously a lot better. Um, and I think just black goes a lot better with red than white. Plus, it'll look cool with the iOS 13 dark mode. Um, so basically what I have here is a fifth generation iPod Touch 16 gigabyte. Um, the earlier model, uh, this was a four parts listing on eBay, so it does not work, um, but I'm hoping that the display will work, um, otherwise that's bad. I thought it would just be a cheap way to get the screen since this is only $12, so, um, that was the cheapest way to buy, just a black screen. Um, unfortunately the bracket around the screen has broken into a million pieces, so that means I'm just gonna have to use the white bracket from this iPod, assuming it doesn't break. Um, so it'll be it'll be interesting, it'll be like a black screen and then have like a very thin white border. I think it might look cool. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna try that. Um, I figured I'd make a video about this because I do a lot of electronics I, upgrades and things. Um, so that I start making videos about them like I did the other week. Um, uh, I made my white Wii black. I don't know what it is with me about having all my electronics black. Like I have <clears throat> black MacBook um, and pretty much everything else I own except this is black. So I don't know why that is, but basically with the Wii, I would have just bought, in, bought a black Wii and um, transferred all my data from my white one onto that one and then just sold the white one but i guess it's not that easy because um nintendo like you could transfer all the save data and everything but with the the downloaded games from the online store um i guess even if you transfer the games and the data to a new console even if it was with the sd card they wouldn't work for some reason and the other thing is the wii shop closed like a year ago so you can't buy the games again, which I wouldn't have wanted to spend money on this again anyways. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't have been able to have those games, and I, I wouldn't have been okay with that. So I just had to basically, which I think is stupid, that they do it that way, but I basically just had to take my white Wii, buy a black one, which was a four-parts listing again, but that one just wasn't tested and it ended up working fine and it had a game in it which was lego batman so that was kind of cool i got a free game that console only costed four dollars and 99 cents plus like 1507 shipping and tax but you know um so it was pretty cheap to get that and have a working wii with a game in it so i um basically just took the motherboard from the white Wii, and then I took actually kept the optical drive from the black one because it was better. And basically just made the best Wii that I could out of the two, the best combination of parts. Made mine black, and then I was able to create another Wii using the motherboard from the black one and putting it in the white frame here. So now I can sell this one, which is up for sale right now. Okay, so enough, enough about that. Other upgrades I've done, I put a custom airport card in my MacBook Pro here. Um, I did make a video about that, I just didn't upload it because it was too long, and I didn't think anyone would want to watch that. So anyways, getting started with this, um, I really hope I don't break this because it's new and I, I, I love it, so. Um, we're gonna just try it out and see what happens okay so this is just a bean bag that you put in the microwave which i did um and you're supposed to heat the edges of the ipod so that it loosens up the adhesive holding together the display
Okay. <clears throat> Hopefully that's good enough. Um, next, I think you're supposed to take a suction cup. I'm not sure. Okay, take a little suction cup here. And just hold very carefully. Pull it apart. I don't like this. I mean, I guess this display we don't care about as much. It just doesn't come off. I don't remember how I did this last time. I know it took a lot of tries. I can see this wanting to come apart, but it's not happening anytime soon. Okay guys, it took a very long time, but I finally have the display out of the iPod here. Uh, I didn't crack the frame at all, which is good. In fact, it pretty much stayed in place and I just have the glass here. Um, just still connected in there somehow. I can't see. But yeah, we're making progress. Okay, so now this kind of sucks because we have to take off this whole metal piece to just get underneath where these cords are connected. So, I'm going to take my screwdriver and get to work. Okay, good news. So we are really inside of the iPod now. But unfortunately, we have to keep digging because these display cables are just buried in there so deep. So, just give me a few more moments and I should be able to get this figured out, maybe. Okay, things are looking very good. We have the display assembly out of the iPod and now we have to take it out of this one, which I'm not looking forward to. Um, but I'm doing all this, just hoping that, you know, this screen is even gonna work. If it doesn't, it's not ideal. Um, I guess I just have to buy a working one and wait and do it later. Um, but I'm gonna keep working on this. Here is what we have. Kinda cool. Um, yeah. We have the frame out. So yeah, this should look pretty cool. Okay, we have one black screen now. We're definitely gonna want to test and make sure it works before we put everything back together. So let me just quickly install this on here. Okay, so we have that plugged in. Now we're just going to power it on and hope. Oh, it works. So this is gonna be the one problem. Um, when it boots up, it's gonna have the white background so it doesn't exactly match. Um, but you know, it's not too big of a deal, obviously, but that's so exciting, it works. This has been so successful. All right, now just to put the rest of it back together. Okay guys, I got everything back together. Uh, as you can see, this is the final product. Um, basically, I just had to you know, use some more adhesive, we just used Gorilla Glue to um, glue it back together. Um, so I had to have that clamped together for a few hours. Um, but this is what it looks like. So you can see we have the white band around the whole thing, which it definitely looks cool. Um, it's unique. Uh, obviously there isn't going to be anything else like this. Um, and I feel like, you know, if we would have used the black one, it still would have looked out of place because like the headphone jack connector, lightning connector would have still been white, so that wouldn't have looked great. Um, so yeah, this is definitely unique. Um, I'm happy with it. As you can see, I turned on the dark mode since I now feel like it truly deserves that. Um, and yeah, everything works good and looks cool as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video of my making a custom iPod Touch 7th generation product red and black. Um, again, this iPod is 
still a little too small for my hands, but, but it is cool and um, there's nothing else like this out there. So that is the video. I will see you guys next time. Peace.